Hi folks, welcome to another Wednesday widget. Let's make this sign. Fusion 360, let's machine it out. We're gonna powder coat it and then we're gonna mount it up. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. We're using our Pearson vacuum plate and I had this idea, let's stick a sharpie in a drill chuck really quick and let's just trace the profile of the part which should much more easily tell me a good place to locate the gasket material that we trace around on the inside. The key thing with the vacuum plate though is also knowing your part can't have too much bow or warp in it and this aluminum extrusion can be really bad like that and the piece that I happened to grab here which was 3 16 I think maybe quarter inch actually. I couldn't press that. I was trying to push it out. Sometimes you can push down and it'll suck out that bow. It just wasn't happening here. So how do we solve that? Get a different piece. We just stepped up to a 3 8 inch. So boom, good to go. We're ready to machine it. So face it, half inch end mill to rough out the outside and the interior pockets. And then we do 3D adaptives with progressively smaller tools. Now, have you ever done a 3D adaptive rest machining? Take for example, this part, we're coming in here with like a quarter inch tool and we can't get into these little tight radius corners. So I would think all that that next tool should be doing is finishing those corners. But if I step down to this tiny tool, one eighth inch tool, take a look. It, it does this stuff on the outside. Well, that's ridiculous. The quarter inch tool would have gotten that. Why are you doing so much work out here and along these straight inside walls? Here's the trick. It's kind of counterintuitive. On my roughing or my bigger tool strategy, look at your stock to leave. In this case, it's five thousandths of an inch radial. All you've got to do to get rid of these whisper cuts on this finer step down is this operation's radial stock to leave plus its tolerance needs to be more than the last tool operation's radial stock to leave. So remember in this one with the tool 31, we had five thousandths of an inch. So if I make this radial stock to leave seven, really have a cushion. The five thousandths from the prior one plus the one thousandth here would be six and I'm going above that seven, click okay, and now you'll see you don't get those silly cuts. It's only doing work where it really needs to do work. On our Z0, so this is really important because on a vacuum plate, I don't want to cut into the vacuum plate. So I'm putting it at the bottom of my part and we got a little bit of stock to clean off here on the top. Pay attention to that. We'll discuss that here in a second. The big question though is, am I going to have enough work holding power? So how much surface area is this? Well, you'd never know it, but Fusion will tell you the surface area. Hop back into model, click on this and you'll see it's the sign, body, body, right click on this body right here, which is that body, and go to properties, and boom, surface area is 153 square inches. We look at the Pearson work holding, this is the folks that make the vacuum plate that we use. If you scroll down, they've got this formula, which is basically your surface area, a square inches times 14, and you can read more about what that means there, but if we go calculator, if we had 153 times 14, that's 2,140 pounds of cold down pressure. That's pretty darn good. Now, we're actually a bit shy of that because we don't have a perfect gasket around the perfect perimeter. We're inside of that. So call it even 75% of the area covered, 2,142 times 0.75, 1,600 pounds. Honestly, I'm not worried about it. We do have one trick up our sleeve. Let's go take a look. Sandpaper. So that's the trick. Sandpaper is going to do two things. It's going to lift our part off this by just, you know, five or six thou, actually maybe even a hair less. 
it's also going to provide us a little bit more stability because we've got all that clamping pressure, you know, 1,500 pounds, maybe more, but the vacuum plates can tend to rotate your parts, and this just gives it, a, this is 220 grit, regular old stuff, it gives you a little bit more twist resistance. So just two little pieces here, make sure they stay inside your gasket. I'll set my part down here off camera because I need to make sure I get it lined up, but we got a good flat surface. I deburred the edges, so there's no sharp edges there. I measured this, it's 0.27, so I can measure off the top and set that as a positive 0.27, because remember our Z0 is the bottom of the part. But then what I'll do is I'll come over with the Heimer and I'll make sure that when I then touch off the table, that's still further below zero. That way, none of my tools should touch my vacuum plate. I think I've got all my tools set up. These are normal tools for us, with the exception of the 1 16th inch end mill. Lakeshore, boom. 1 16th square. How about that 1 8th inch collet? That may have been staged ahead of time. Two point six three eight offsets one oh one two point six three eight. I always go back and check. We're good. Let's make some chips. Pearson works, it's actually pretty cool. This is up and when you push down, that sucks down showing you've got a vacuum. So I set my Heimer at zero and now, remember our work coordinate system is at the bottom. So my stock is 0.27 thick. So now what I wanna do is check when I come and touch the vacuum plate and go to zero. Good. Zero there is 0.01 below my lowest point. So I have pretty decent confidence that we're not gonna to touch the plate in a good way. Our normal Superfly deck off, and then we're using a half inch corn cob or a roughing end mill here. And uh, Bob Warfield over at CNC Cookbook actually did a great article on, a video, link in the video description on why roughers are, are better tools than you might think. And in this case, the one reason I really like it is it helps reduce tool pressure. And that's what I want to avoid here. With the vacuum plate, we don't want to have any sort of accidental linking moves that ramp in at too high a feed rate. You know, something like when in your vise, it wouldn't be a big deal. The tool probably can take it. But with a vacuum plate, that extra shock could bump it. Um, and then just progressively stepping down. This is where I love the Fusion 360 cam. Other than that one little quirk about the rest machining, I think the cam makes it really easy to do these progressive rest operations where the next smaller tool gets into the smaller nook and crannies. And we actually, as I mentioned, finished this one with a 1 16th end mill. Making these uh, signs look good when you've got sharp inside corners means you really do have to just end with a small tool. And then finally, just some backside deburring. Our blast cabinet has to be one of my least favorite pieces of equipment. It's uh, served us well back from even the New York days, but the uh, window is uh, is not a window, it's a door. You can't see a thing through it. I really need to buy one that has a proper ventilation system or recirculation system that helps you uh, helps you see what you're going on there. And I think you can get tear-offs for the windows too, because again, when you can't see it, it's really, it's really difficult to use. There's just a couple of burrs that I need to get off. Now, I, I could sand it, that would be totally doable, but you know what, we got this new tumbler, let's give it a shot. We were sending out so much stuff, it wasn't the cost of tumbling, it was the cost of shipping that was killing us. Uh, let's see here, I didn't use this thing.
Okay, out of the tumbler, and shout out to Brad at MC Finishing. It's been great for a lot of the parts we're running. Here, uh, I only left it in for about 20 minutes, and it was pretty aggressive. Uh, no problems, but I honestly, had I known this, probably just would have used the sandpaper. The other thing is the key to good powder coating is not having debris and junk and residual grease and grit and grime in these little sharp corners. So ironically, I'm going to put it back in the blast cabinet to clean it up. Then I'm going to wash it with soap and water. Then we're going to powder coat. So one of the keys to this project, and I think what makes this sign look awesome, is this textured powder coat. Link in the video description. but. I had never heard of this stuff until Shane from MakePartsCom, who, who hooked us up with a smaller version of this sign. It's just so cool, and it's easy. It's just like normal powder coating. We we actually did a powder coat video link here, showing how easy it is to do this stuff at home or even with a small toaster oven. Normal, just 400 degrees, 20 minutes for a you know, what do they call it? Flow out and cure. I'm a very beginner powder coat, but it's really not hard to get the parts to look good, and you can kind of see the texture here. And then this is what's awesome. Super fly off the finish. It looks so good. Not half bad, right folks? So a big shout out to Shane at make-parts.com. Shane actually made this for us a couple years ago, which is where I got the idea. And uh, he actually mentioned, walked through how he did it. And I asked, hey, do you mind if we make a big one for our floor? And he said, absolutely. I want to give Shane a plug for his website, make-parts.com. He's based out of Las Vegas. He does machining, he does routing work, he does a lot of 3D printing work. It's some really good work, so if you guys want work done, definitely check Shane out. Let's go mount her up. Hey, Jed, you want to go for a car ride? Come on, let's go. Let's go. So I'm making a backer plate, which is a sort of a quick and dirty two holes that will be for those Tapcon, uh, what do they call masonry type uh, screws. I want to countersink them so that the heads sit flush or actually just below flush. And then my idea is, you know, I've got this textured concrete on the front of the building, so I can use two of these screws in directly into the uh, concrete block, and then I'm, I'm going to drill and tap two quarter twenties in the middle of the part the top and the bottom I'm gonna try using actually actually did work out pretty well to use those set screws as uh, vertical alignment guys to basically keep this the sign parallel to the face of the building So need to keep it level. Remember our shop organization video with the Kaizen foam? This is what you need. Buy one of these for like four bucks. Guess why? It makes it so handy. So I like it. Well, I don't even need this level yet. This doesn't need to be perfectly level because we're going to stick the sign on top of it, which is kind of the nice thing about this design. But nevertheless, let's get it ballpark. So I find it very difficult to, to drill into the concrete block uh, straight anyways, especially this textured stuff. So not going to be perfect, but again, no worries.
There we go. I was nervous about using this. Uh, I didn't want to strip it, but that actually worked quite well. Um, now I can fine tune it. Did I bend it? No, not really. Uh, a little there, maybe. And then these set screws, in theory, are gonna help me keep it square and taut to the wall. I don't, shoot, that one's not gonna have enough room. And this one may not either. I don't have any longer, well, that one might. I could put some shim behind it, although I'm not crazy. Ooh, oh I do, yes, that's great. Nice and rigid and square. Let's finish it up. Link in the video description. This is the stuff you want. Almost forgot the level. Forgot the scissors. You definitely want scissors for this tape. off the backer plate with some acetone you definitely want it clean or free of oil and then it was cold out so using a heat gun just really to get the chill out of that part it doesn't really need to be hot I just didn't want it super cold although this 3m tape that we're using does do a phenomenal job holding up we put it on some outdoor signs before and years later tried to get them off and that stuff that this it's just, tape is amazing It was 70 degrees the last three days, and I picked today to do this video. Thanks, folks. Take care. See you soon.